Tea. Part six, interlude. So what's the problem, mister? She was a striking woman. He would never have called her beautiful. A heavy-boned, obese grandmother with broad features. Skin like polished ebony against a shock of stark white hair in severe curls. Dressed in an old-fashioned floral print dress. Radiating determination and impatience with the whole world. On paper, there is no problem. The money's all been transferred. The turmoil have no objection. It doesn't break any of this country's laws. And I've got no official reason to stop you going. So, why am I sitting here, instead of standing in your magic time machine right now? Why ain't we doing this, Mr. Redstone? Because I don't understand why you want it. She shrugged. You can't understand why I want to see my baby grandkids before they die. Miss Sharp. Mrs. My husband's dead three years. But I'm still Mrs. Mrs. Sharp. Your grandchildren were born with a rare genetic condition, untreatable at the time. They lived a little over a week before they died in the intensive care unit. You witnessed it, together with the parents, and you assisted your husband in the last rites. I know. I was there. It was thirty years ago. Now you want to go back to the previous night for one hour. You never got a burning need to do something? Something which made no sense to other people, but you knew you just had to do. Frequently. But I was thirteen, and after a good night's sleep, I didn't feel that way any more. Fine. You don't understand it. But you don't need to understand it. You just need to do what it says on that contract. She gestured to a thin bundle of papers on the desk. On the top sheet were three signatures, the lowest an embossed sigil in a language no one had ever been able to decipher. Perfectly true. But I ask you, you indulge me for another few minutes. Then I'll take you to the transfer room, if you want it. She set her features into a look of impatient tolerance. Go on. One of my earliest clients had been abused as a child sexually, by her father. She wanted to go back, warn herself, prevent it happening. All very reasonable. I told her it might not work at all. One warning from someone she'd never met, against someone she'd never stood up to in all her eight years. But she said she had to try. And who could blame her? I should have known. She wanted to go back to the night he started. Why then? Why not days or months? When she arrived in the past, in the house she grew up in, she didn't even look in her own room. She took a knife from the kitchen and crept into her father's room. She... Good girl! He survived, and my client suddenly got a new set of childhood memories alongside her own, all about how a strange woman broke into the house and tried to murder her father, who afterwards couldn't work any more. So they had to sell the home and move into a one-room apartment. And what do you think happened in that room for the next four years? She now had the memories of two abusive childhoods. I see. Another was an investment banker who had made a disastrous sale just 18 months earlier. He wanted to give himself a message not to do it. It didn't make economic sense, because he spent more to go back than he'd have saved. But there was no reason to say no. And if we hadn't taken his money, one of the other companies would have. But it wasn't the sale he was interested in. He had memorized all the important stock market movements for a year, planning to go back and dictate them to his younger self. The younger self made millions. Then he gambled them and lost them all. The market had changed. He had changed it just by changing a few decisions. And the numbers weren't true any more. But he kept trying to use them, until the money ran out. When he came to us for the second time, he thought he had a system. This time it would work. He still sends me letters occasionally. Mrs. Sharp let out a sigh. She didn't look impressed. You're saying, watch out, you might get what you wish for. I'm saying, 
time has a way of correcting itself. If you try to cheat it. They locked eyes, but hers gave nothing away. Miss, Mrs. Sharp, I have the legal right to veto your claim, and we both know I could invent any spurious reason to go on the refusal form. But you ain't gonna do it, are you? No. Please come with me, and the company will fulfill its part of the contract. They walked in silence through the winding series of dim corridors that led from the office to the lab. It was known as the lab, and there was even a big sign above the double doors saying laboratory, but really it was a converted storage room, twenty foot square, with the windows blacked out, filled with desk-sized pieces of equipment monitored by technicians in white coats. At the center was a raised circular dais with handrails, and above it a black metal cone, seemingly held in place by thin cables, but in fact hanging in space, unsupported. Redstone briskly gave instructions to half a dozen technicians, and helped Mrs. Sharp up onto the dais. She didn't need any help, but let him do it out of politeness, or maybe gratitude. Ready, called out a young white-coated woman over the rising low hum coming from the cone. Five seconds in seed, then send, said Redstone, also raising his voice. He looked at the elderly woman gripping the handrails. A smile was breaking through on her lips. Good luck, Mrs. Sharp, he called, and in a snap of invisible energy she was gone. The young tech looked up from something that looked like a radar screen. Good luck, she said. She's just going to see her grandchildren. I hope so, responded Redstone after a pause. The seconds passed. Ten, eleven, twelve. They stretched out to the minute mark, then passed it. Someone started to say something, but was cut off by a low, sharp burst of static. A sparse crackle, not like the usual transport sound. It died away slowly to silence. The instruments started showing something. The device, like a radar screen, jumped from showing a regular sine wave to chaotic noise. The cone started humming, but it was much higher pitched and wobbling, as though uncertain, or frightened. Then abruptly on the dais were two tiny babies, dark brown, naked and crying. There was a bleeding cut on the abdomen of one, as though a tube had been ripped out. The wobbling grew more uncertain, and instruments all around the room flashed incomprehensible readings. Medical! shouted Redstone over the noise and confused babble of voices. Get those kids to the doctors. Supervisory. Report. Those who weren't staring in amazement at screens and gabbling into headsets had nothing to say, just standing around looking helpless and confused. A pair of medics in green uniforms rapidly checked the babies for responsiveness and injury. Satisfied, they picked them up bodily and carried them away in blankets. As they did, a black strap, like a blood pressure monitor, dropped from between the babies. A travel bracelet. The young tech stared at it. But that shouldn't be possible. If she took it off, she'd get returned. And exchanging things between time points? That's just impossible. As she spoke, everything in the room started to blur, as though the whole world were drifting out of focus. Or is it just forbidden? murmured Redstone to himself, looking at nothing. Because no one knows what would happen. Then the blurring stopped, and reversed. The waveforms on the bleeping instruments started to settle back down into the familiar sine waves and pulse trains. The oscillating tone from the overhead device faded away. Redstone opened his eyes, not having realized it shut them. What just happened? He asked the silent room. I'll accept guesses. After looking around, the technician spoke hesitantly. I think we've just seen the tumor let someone break the rules. And I think we've seen them patch things up afterwards. Redstone nodded. I think you're right. He started to walk out, but stopped when she spoke again. Sir? Why did they do it? 
Do you mean why did they let her break the rules? Or why did they let her break the rules? I mean, why did they save us from the consequences? And if the consequences can be avoided, why have rules at all? All good questions. Maybe one day we'll have answers.